Okay, we're picking up here for the final finish. I'll review what we've done so far. I'm giving it a final weird section name here. What we've done in this case is we went through and we drafted actually a 2D piece. In all reality, all we did, we, we made something 2D. We did extrude, revolve, union, subtract, anything we needed to do to make it a 3D piece, uh, which you can't see in this, in this case, but if I do a V point, one comma one comma one, you can see that that is a 3D face or a 3D piece. So once we did that, we defined a major predominant view, in this case, the front view. We then went over to a sheet of more or less into a layout. We made a view that was to some good scale. And then we used the solve view command to project out two orthogonal views. And in this case, one what would be called a section view. We'll do one more here, which would be an auxiliary view, just for, I guess, for grin's sake. I'll just do it again, S-O-L-V-I-E-W. I'm gonna tell it an auxiliary view. And then it's gonna ask me to the first point on the incline plane there, and I'm gonna tell it a second point there, and then side to view from. It's gonna, I'm gonna tell it where. I have to give it the center of the viewport. Center if I view center corner of the viewport, off under the corner and back here, and I'm going to say aux. So we have made now, we have four viewports on this sheet of layout, but in all reality, one, two, three, and four of them are made with the solve view command. That's fundamentally different. We could go back and redo this one with the solve view, and then we have uh, L5 made with that command. We won't do that in this case. So I am. we've made all our viewports. Again, with Inventor, this is even more natural. In SketchUp, you'd need layout to do this. But the fact of having something that you've drafted generally 2D and then made 3D and then to make better 2D projections is just the reality of uh, how far the software has come. So if I go back over here, I'm going to show you an effect v point one comma one comma one that the zero zero is someplace over here and what you're going to see in a second is you're going to have it project out uh, and cut sections and put things on particular layers uh, before you go about doing this you need to make sure that you have the hidden um, line type and uh, some particular particular uh, cross section, some hatching available. But once you've got that available, everything will pop up pretty nicely. And when you do the SOL, S-O-L-D-R-A-W, and you select from the layout tab, the four ends of the sheets, more or less, the four ends of the layouts, it will go through and do the mathematical projection, um, showing you pretty much everything you need. And if you see these, it does all the projections through, on the paper space and you can then later on if you can go into your layout you can more or less just freeze out if you need to and everyone but that one you could freeze out and not see the model uh, because it's actually done a set, set of lines on each and every one of those if you notice here because of that later on you might want to go through and um, and do some kind of freezing and thawing later on if you look at here in terms of the layers you're going to see that there is you know, different things are going to be set up differently. Hidden fro, it makes a lot of different layers. It does this free freezing and thawing of viewports and pr pretty exciting, extensive stuff. And once again, Inventor is going to do it better. I don't want to promote Inventor, but it does a pretty nice job. But if we go back to model here, you can see what it actually did. And so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and freeze the model one more time by clicking on the object here. And you can see what it did. It projected lines out to those planes, more or less, and it put them on the correct layers. Um, and in the end, it even will do some hatching. I'll have to check out why it didn't do that hatching. But if that section view came through, it will hatch parts that would, which you cut through and leave kind of blank and white parts that you did not. But you've got essentially here these kind of these are projected out to the theoretical kind of X, Y, and Z planes uh, of, our, of our drawing, plus the auxiliary one, which is defined here. So pretty, pretty amazing stuff, especially when you go back to here and you've got everything shown in three views, which you didn't have to draft by hand.
In this case, this is a way we can check our work, check our work here. But finally, I'm going to end up with this by going back to my model, turning my, everything on, minus layer, on, star, thaw, star. So I've got all that stuff. I'm going to go ahead and very quickly get rid of these projection lines. I don't think SketchUp's going to like them. And I'm going to leave the rest of it around and say now file, save as. Remember to save it as an old drawing. I'm just going to call this junk for now. So I can close it, get out of this, get into SketchUp, and do an import. You had to make sure I saved it as an 04 drawing. At this point when I go in, and I'm going to try to get this thing fitting to where it needs to be. It'll be a little bit off of our, kind of right in there. Now if I do file import that junk drawing, you'll see it's going to bring in stuff. Not only did it bring in the lines and everything else, but it actually brought in that piece. So it brought this into different, you explode it, and even each of these came in as their own little pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these for now. Like highlighting them, edit, cut. There's this erase. People like to do this a lot. I'm left clicking around. That's how my kids do it. You learn to grab, control X. Just like in Windows. And I'm just going to take it back down to that individual piece again. So we got three more minutes on the YouTube stuff. So this was to kind of take a piece. And you'll see now within SketchUp, SketchUp is not actually, um, it, it actually deals differently with different entities. So in this case, it actually did bring that in as a more or less as a solid, which SketchUp doesn't normally deal with. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this all the way up. And realizing now that we've got this piece kind of completely kind of laid out, um, we can set up our viewports any way we want and then SketchUp what it has is this ability ability to look at a view an edge style a face style of x-ray so you kind of get that feeling of how you can go about you know get a good, getting a good view of a piece um, that is not necessarily there and I, this is going to explode on me but I'm going to try it anyway so I'm going to go camera standard views top so I got that piece there camera parallel projection so there's all kinds of things you can do within SketchUp when you get to the 3D. It works in 2D or 3D, but the reality is you've got to do that good 2D drafting. If you remember, all we really drafted in 2D in this piece going back was this exterior boundary, these boxes and circles and a fillet, and that is probably best done with AutoCAD. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my face style back to turn the x-ray off. And I'm going to put a floor on it here, and I'm going to hope for the best that when I say run, it doesn't explode, which it just did. So I'll finally let you notice that right here it did bring in all of my views. That's important, how important views are. It brings them into SketchUp. And have you realized that, in fact, learning how to really get a good 2D, and that can be done by hand if you use triangles and keep things perpendicular and everything else. Learning to get a good 2D drawing, draw orthographically, you can go really far, really fast in not only 3D drafting, but 3D modeling. So we'll close the program here, and we'll end that at that. That's what we've got before we go with the mentioning on uh, orthographic views. Thanks for listening.